Hi everyone, this is New Sensei and this is Archery Pop Shots, a series in which we take a look at how archery is featured in video games. Age of Empires was a pioneering game, encapsulating its distinct real-time strategy gameplay and the unique flavours of centuries of human history. Its sequel, Age of Empires 2, The Age of Kings, and its expansion, The Conquerors, went even further, focusing on the Middle Ages and expanding its lineup of historical factions and campaigns. Re-released in HD in 2013, with three new expansions released since, Age of Empires 2 is truly a game that has aged well. As a teenager, playing Age of Empires 2 exposed me to so much history that I didn't know, kingdoms and civilizations that school didn't teach me about, and it helped me visualize history in a way that a textbook couldn't. Even today, I still think of Age of Empires when coming across bits and pieces of history that are mentioned in the game. Of course, as a game, most of the elements are balanced and tweaked for entertainment, which in turn has led to comical things that Age of Empires taught me. For example, did you know that villagers can hunt with bows, but the use of a bow as a military weapon was never realized until the height of the feudal era? There's a lot to examine with the rich world of Age of Empires. Fortunately, we're only focusing on the archery elements. However, there's still a lot of material to cover. We'll run through as much as we can and hopefully by the end, you might have learned something about the game and the history it's based on. In Age of Empires, each faction effectively plays the same set of units and buildings, regardless of the location and era with some minor cosmetic differences. This is a contrast to other strategy games, such as Warcraft, where each race or faction is completely different. Where the factions differ in Age of Empires is in the availability of certain units in their roster, certain restricted technologies, and unique units and civilization bonuses. The base archer unit in the game is the Archer. It is trained from the aptly named Archery range, which is first available in the Feudal Age. Archers are effective as raiding units early in the game, capable of harassing workers and disrupting the opponent's economy, and have bonus damage against spearmen. In the Castle Age, archers can be upgraded to crossbowmen, which are stronger missile units. In the Imperial Age, certain civilizations can further upgrade their crossbowmen into arbalists. Historically, the term arbalist was used to refer to heavy crossbows, typically with the steel prod for very high power and mechanically loaded. Like with most things in the game, this upgrade path is meant to represent a logical improvement in units, though in real life this was not necessarily the case. Crossbows were widely used alongside bows, such as in Europe and China, though many regions did not widely adopt the crossbow at all, such as the Saracens and the Japanese. The archery range also produces the skirmisher unit armed with javelins, which are designed in the game as a hard counter to archers, with high pierce armor and a bonus against archers, though with lower base damage and range. Skirmishers tend to be a very popular trash unit in the late game due to their low cost. Historically, javelins were not effective counters to archers, who outranged them significantly. Javelins were primarily short-range thrown weapons by light infantry or horsemen. The third unit from the archery range available in the Castle Age is the Cavalry Archer, suitable for hit and run attacks and useful against slow moving infantry and harassing workers. Horse archery was a terrifying method of war, especially among the Asian steppe nomads, including the Mongols and the Huns, and their traditions and skills were passed on to wherever they went. Notably, horse archery was less prevalent in Western Europe, where foot archery was preferred. The final unit that can be trained at the archery range by some civilizations is the Hand Cannoneer. The Hand Cannoneer doesn't exactly fall into our definition of an archer, so we'll stop it here. In fact, we have to look over every other thing in the game that shoots arrows. Towers, castles, and ships. We can't really cover every single unit that might hold a bow, and we've still got a lot more to go through. As mentioned earlier, what makes each playable civilization unique is the unique units and bonuses. We'll go over the civilizations in the game with archery bonuses and consider historical equivalents. The Britons, representing the people of the British Isles, notably the Kingdom of England, boast bonuses that reflect the widely known achievements of English archers during the medieval period. 
The unique unit, the longbowman, is a representation of the famous English archers who were most active during the Hundred Years' War against France, with their heavy war bows, massed arrow storms, and deadly effect on the French knights and footmen at Crecy and Agincourt. In the game, longbowmen have the longest range of any military unit, even outranging castles when fully upgraded, and infamously making them one of the best units on Black Forest. Archers also get additional range bonuses in the castle and imperial ages, further establishing the dominance of English archery. Finally, their team bonus improves the training speed of archery range units for allies, perhaps alluding to the mandatory training of archery during this time, providing a ready pool of conscripts for English campaigns. If there's anything somewhat off about the Britons, it would be that the longbow wasn't primarily known for extreme long range. Its use in battles like Agincourt gave the bow an effective range of around 150 meters, but the primary advantage of the war bow was its greater penetration at shorter distances. The Chinese civilization, representing the broad spectrum of Tang, Song, and Ming dynasties, have access to the Chuko Nu unique unit. The Chuko Nu is a Chinese repeating crossbow, fed by bolts from a box magazine. The Chuko Nu was a rapid fire weapon, though it was presumed to be fairly weak and had short effective range. In the game, the Chuko Nu shoots multiple arrows, making them very effective at chipping away at high armor units. The Ethiopians, representing the Kingdom of Aksum, draw on the famed archery skills of the Nubians. In antiquity, the Egyptians referred to Nubia as Tarseti, or Land of the Bow. In the 7th century AD, the Nubians repelled Muslim invasions. Their archers were said to be so fast and accurate, many Muslim warriors lost their eyes, earning their Nubian archers the moniker Archers of the Eye, also a special hero unit in Asia Empires too. The Ethiopian civilization reflects this historical feat through its archers getting faster attack speed. The Mayans feature the Plumed Archer Unique Unit, a fast-moving archer with good pierce armor. Their plumed costume reflects the attire worn in battle by the Mayans, and archers are also cheaper. The Saracens have a bonus in which cavalry archers have bonus damage to buildings, and a team bonus that grants allied archer units extra damage against buildings. Apart from being panned as one of the least useful team bonuses, I'm not entirely sure what the historical basis was, perhaps a reference to the fast hit and run raids by Arabs. Historically, the Arabs were very well regarded for their archery, and some of the most comprehensive archery manuals of this time period were from Arab sources, which otherwise isn't reflected in the game. The Vietnamese have a proud history of archery, with the dense jungles of Southeast Asia being suited for infantry and archery warfare. The Vietnamese fought two famous battles at the Bac Dang River, the first against the Chinese and another against the Mongols, both times impaling the invading boats on spikes buried in the river and setting their ships alight with failing arrows. The Vietnamese archers have extra hit points, though despite being a Vietnamese archer myself, I can't verify this. The Vietnamese also have a unique unit, the Rattan Archer, referring to material used to make bows in this region. The Italians can train the Genoese crossbowmen. Crossbowmen from Genoa were highly valued during this period and were often recruited as mercenaries, such as by the French during the Hundred Years' War. Genoese crossbowmen carried a pavise, or tall shield, in battle, which they would take shelter behind while loading. They have bonus damage against knights, perhaps in reference to their effectiveness against armored targets, a trait not shared with the regular crossbowman unit. The Indians can train the unique elephant archer. Elephants were used effectively in warfare in Asia, being used either to trample enemies or to act as tall platforms for spear throwers and archers. The Mongols, famed for their horse archers, have numerous bonuses. Their cavalry archers shoot faster, and they also train the Mangudai, which in real life is supposedly a light cavalry unit used for screening and luring enemies into ambushes. In the game, Mangudai are powerful cavalry archers with powerful damage against siege weapons. The Huns, despite also being well known for mounted archery, do not have a unique horse archer unit. They can, however, produce cavalry archers at lower cost. The Koreans also have a very proud archery tradition, though this is not well reflected in the game. They indirectly benefit from having better towers. They can train the unique war wagon, which is technically a cavalry arch in the game, but it is an oddity in that it doesn't directly match any real historical unit. The closest match would be the Watcher, a cart which could fire 200 rockets, technically fire arrows, though the war wagon does nothing like that.
A special mention goes to the Japanese. The unique unit, the Samurai, is a strong infantry unit with bonus damage against other unique units. This plays on the popular notion of Samurai being expert swordsmen. However, historically Samurai were first and foremost mounted archers and were adept at using bows on horseback and on foot. Swords were a final backup weapon. Moving on to researchable technologies, most of these serve as flavour tags with some relevance but for the most part they are names for arbitrary stat upgrades, so we explore the relevant bits where we can. Starting with Thumb Ring. Available to most civilizations, the Thumb Ring tech increases rate of fire and adjusts accuracy to 100%, meaning that an archer will always hit a stationary target. In real life, thumb rings are protective guards for the thumb, intended for use by cultures that shot using a thumb draw method, such as the Saracens, Mongols, Chinese, Turks, and so on. After extensive testing with a thumb ring, it's safe to say that the ring itself does not automatically make you 100% accurate. Parthian Tactics, which increases the armor of cavalry archers and dramatically increases the damage against spear units, is a reference to the ancient Parthians, an empire that controlled much of Persia and was an adversary to Rome. The Parthians were renowned for their horse archers, and the Parthian shot is the iconic technique of shooting backwards while running away. The standoff tactics were particularly devastating to formations without the range and mobility to defend against the light missile cavalry, with the overwhelming defeat of the Romans and the Battle of Carhae exemplifying the Parthian tactics. The three offensive upgrades at the blacksmith all increase range and damage. Fletching refers to the addition of feathers at the back of an arrow, which stabilise the arrow in flight, though this is inherently part of using arrows, so it's a little odd to include it as an upgrade. Bodkin points are narrow arrow tips that are used to penetrate armour. The bracer refers to the arm guard used by archers to prevent the string from flaying the arm, though why this would improve range and damage is ambiguous. The defensive armour upgrades reflect the preferences for lighter armour. Archers were often equipped with textile armours for easier movement and less restriction when using a bow. The padded armour would make the most sense. Leather armour tends to be misunderstood, with more accurate examples being Kyobuli or hardened leather armour. Ring armour is a questionable addition. Ring armour, unlike mail, supposedly consisted of metal rings sewn onto cloth. No examples exist of this kind of armour and seems to be more of a fantasy idea. Ballistics is an upgrade at the university that improves accuracy against moving targets. The understanding of projectiles is indeed what ballistics studies, though archers would certainly have been capable of hitting moving targets in real life without a university degree. Another university tech is chemistry, which unlocks gunpowder units and gives all units an additional point of damage through flaming projectiles. Fire arrows would have been used in war, with special arrowheads containing mixtures of flammable materials. They would have been used to set defences on fire, and not for anti-personnel, as the flaming arrow would be less accurate and would have less range due to the additional burning mass. For unique techs, the Britons get yeomen, improving their archer range even more. Yeomen were a special military class that archers were often drawn from, being a more distinguished middle class. Rocketry is a Chinese tech that improves Chukondu damage. In this sense, rocketry refers to using gunpowder to project arrows, which was used in some weapons like the Fire Lance, but would not have been used by archers or crossbows. The Italian Pavese tech improves archer armour. The Pavese is a tall shield often used by Italian crossbowmen, which would provide cover while they were loading, and is actually seen in the Genoese crossbowmen unit model. The Magyars can research the recurve bow, while in modern times the term is used more often to refer to modern bows, in a medieval context a recurve bow refers to bows with a distinctive curvature commonly seen in horse bows used by warriors such as the Huns, Mongols, Saracens and so on. The Magyars were also famed for mounted archery, though technically all these civilizations would have used recurve bows. In discussions, these bows are more commonly known as composite bows, after their material rather than their shape. The Mayans have obsidian arrows, granting their archers a significant bonus damage against buildings. This one is odd. Obsidian is a volcanic glass that can form a very sharp cutting edge and was used for arrows and melee weapons. However, if shot against a hard surface, the obsidian arrow would shatter. 
This would have been more sensible if it was a bonus damage to units rather than buildings. Finally, a couple of relevant building upgrades. Arrow slits provide additional attack damage of towers, which is interesting as historically arrow slits were important defensive features for castles, allowing arrows to be shot outward against enemies attacking the walls. On a similar note, the Japanese tech Yasama, literally meaning arrow slits, adds additional arrows to towers. Phew, that was quite a list, as to be expected from a game that tries to capture the peak of medieval history and warfare in a strategy game. And as far as that goes, there's nothing to really fault about the game. It doesn't go out of its way to get things wrong or make things up, and most of the game is based on history in some relevant way. It seems odd to do a review and a recommendation now, given that Age of Empires has been a big part of strategy gaming. If you've played it, you'd know that it's a great game, and with the HD version, an active community, and even a pro scene, if you've been living in a different age and haven't picked up this game, it's definitely worth your time. I hope you all learned something from this episode of Archery Pop Shots. This is New Sensei, and as usual, shoot straight and aim for your best.